in the stadium here in Nanjin and the order of play on court number one. All four matches have been concluded in two straight games and the men's doubles is coming up. The number one seed Gideon and Sukamulyo of Indonesia against Ivanov and Sosanov of Russia. And of course it's the top end of the draw and uh, it's already been decided who the winner of this match is going to play, which is the number five seeds from Japan, Kamura and Sonoda. And as you can see, the Indonesians, Gideon and Sukamulyo, is a number one on the world ranking. And uh, they have actually been number one for 55 weeks already. Their opponents are number 10 on that world ranking, which I'm not entirely sure of because I've got here in my notes that they are number 12. The 10 seats in the Ten tournament. Seat. Yep. Two Russians in the blue here. It's uh, Sosanov, the left-hander, and the tall, tall right-hander, Ivanov. And as you can see, it's a comfortable lead for the two Indonesians. They're three nil up. And last time they played was in 2017 at the China Open. But they are not only 3 0 up in the head to head between the two pairs here, the Indonesians, but they have won all their matches in two straight games. But it was a surprise a few years ago when this combination from Russia went on to win the All England Championship. I think that was in 2016, wasn't it? But here we got Ivan Zosunov, age 29, 184 centimeters. They are ranked at number 12, and the highest they have been is at number seven, and that happened on the 14th of December last year. The left-hander here is definitely the creative player of the two. The partner here, Vladimir Ivanov, age 31, height 197, tall, tall athlete. Same applies, same ranking applies to him, of course. The partnership have played together since 2008. And no doubt that uh, Sosanov is the uh, creative one of the two players, and uh, here's the way to the uh, third round. They had a bye in the first and beat the pair from Vietnam very comfortably in 26 minutes. 21-13, 21-14. On the other hand, yesterday, Kevin Sukamulyu, age 23, 170 centimetres. They are ranked one in the world and have been so for 55 weeks already. Yesterday, they were in deep, deep trouble against the two young players from China. They had to go the full distance and win in three games. Margus Gideon, age 27. 169 centimeters and of course the same ranking applies it will be very interesting to see if uh, Gideon Marcus Gideon is moving a little bit better today I felt that he was very very stationary yesterday as we can see they won 21 18 against Han and Seoul of China in 52 minutes in that third and decided game so I feel it's a lot up to Gideon to really raise his performance if this combination from Indonesia is going to fulfill the promise of winning this title. And Steen, you saw them yesterday as well with me, and uh, what is your conclusion on it? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree that uh, Marcus Gideon wasn't playing that well, but I also think that he raised his game towards the end of the match, and... Uh, 
the question is then uh, is it because the way he played is that because uh, he wasn't at his best or it, was it because kevin sukumuri couldn't stamp his mark on the front court as uh, he normally does and i felt the chinese played a very good tactical game yesterday here's the two russian coaches claudia meyer over victor malutin um, I felt the Chinese played a really, really good tactical game yesterday and also helped a little bit by uh, the hole being a little bit uh, slow, so to speak, that uh, it's takes not so sting. easy. Yeah, it takes the sting out of the attack. Yes. Harry, Ladies and gentlemen, on bench. my right, Kevin Sanjay Sukumulio. And here we have Rohana De Silva, the uh, umpire from Sri Lanka, and the service and judge is Simon Au. From Hong Kong, China. Vladimir Ivanov, Russia. Kevin Sanjay Sukumulio to serve to Vladimir Ivanov. Low wall. Trying to get his arm started there, Ivanov. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it a disruptive pair to play, yeah. the two Russians? They, they try to get short rallies as much as possible really attack the net but uh, i'm sure that uh, sukumulio will try to see it differently and that's exactly the interesting thing about this match here that um, i mean the russians they saw the match yesterday the problem is they can't do the same as the chinese nope. could the russians they play their style and when they play well they're really really difficult uh, to play against and i feel that the whole the playing circumstances is, is benefiting the Russians a little bit. I'm just not certain that their style is um, is that efficient against um, this pair. Sukumulio and, yeah. and Gideon because they have a fantastic net player. They have the world's best net player on the other side. So where they normally in the service situation can get the attack, it will be difficult for them. But that's maybe also showing the fact that uh, the Indonesians oh. are three 0 up in. Uh, yeah. in the head-to-head -head matches between them. The Russians should um, find hope in, in four of those games that have been only decided by three or lesser points. So, so they've definitely been able to play with uh, Kevin and, um, and Marcus. But the problem is that if you still score two or three points less than your opponent, then you're not going to play tomorrow. <laughs> However you look at it. <laughs> It's quick flick yeah, serve. Exactly. That's also something that you mentioned yesterday. Flick. Flick to, uh, to, to Gideon. Gideon. Especially in these uh, circumstances here. And this upper quarter of the draw have become very interesting, in my opinion, as uh, the Danes, Bo and Mogensen, uh, lost earlier today. So. Whoever comes out of this first quarter here will be the heavy favorites to um, put the spot in the final, in my opinion. We know that Kimura and Sonoda is waiting the winner of this match in the quarterfinal. It seems like a really strong strategy to flick it to, to Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. Done it twice already. Yeah. I would mix it up so the flicks sometimes are really flat, challenging uh, his reactions more. His reactions and sometimes a bit higher, so he gets more time to to think. But this is what the Russians are good at. Yes, That's so what good. I call disruptive badminton. Yeah. They just go in there, full attack, full blown attack, two or three shots. That's it, finished. Yeah. <laughs> and, and watch, watch Vladimir even of the way he looks at his opponent here, because that's that's a soap opera in itself. <laughs> what are you doing? 
<laughs> Why are you playing that shot? But uh, they know each other so well. But sometimes it must be must be a little bit difficult for <laughs> even Sosunov here to uh, keep the good spirit. Sukamoyo here behind his back. His reactions are just phenomenal. Who, who played that one? Kevin played the last one as well, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. No, I, th I thought it was Gideon. Well, yeah. I might be wrong. Yeah, it's tough to say. It's going out. In, in his eagerness to really finish it at the net, Sukamoyo, on three occasions he's made three mistakes. Yeah. That's what that's what makes him so good. Because yep, yeah. think about all these winners that he makes. Think about how many mistakes he's made during practice, where things have not been successful, where his coaches have said, "Got grey hairs." Yes, and and a lot of them probably said, "Hey, play a little bit more safe." Yep. So. The ones that are really, really technically skilled and imaginative. There's been some um, encouragement in their environment where they grow up to um, some support to make them continue that way. It's so easy to focus on all the mistakes. Uh, sometimes you get to focus on the, the ones that makes a lot of winners. They are allowed to make more mistakes as well. I think first time I saw uh, Sukumoyo play was in mixed doubles actually yeah. in Indonesian Open. Was it with Gracia, Poli, in yeah. mixed? I think you might be right. And uh, they won the first uh, round against a really, really good player. And that was the first time I saw him. Then he lost the second round. But uh, again, straight away you could see what a potential. Yeah. Left that one. Tall, even now. One of the more versatile players on the tour as he comes just off a victory in uh, Russian Open in Vladivostok in mixed doubles with the uh, Korean girl. Min That's Kyung true. Kin. That's true. I saw that. And we have seen him earlier play men's singles as well on occasions. I actually think he played men's singles in the Thomas Cup in May yeah. this year. to mix it up a little <laughs> bit. That's asking for trouble. So, so one point lead for uh, Kevin and Marcus. So while we're watching these really nice slow motion pictures, we are getting ready to commence after the mid-game interval. And uh, the two players from Indonesia, the top seats, number one on the world ranking. Is up 11 10. One 
Hands again, a flick serve. This time by Ivanov. That's good play, isn't it? Um, possibilities come when they play, especially Gideon, below the tape. Not the same uh, imagination as his partner. I was was there yesterday and I st still think it's there. They're, they're not really confident, the two Indonesians. The way they go about things on court, their demeanors and so on, they don't look confident to me. No, because, of course, you've seen them a lot more than I have yeah. uh, over the past uh, few years on, on the circuit. But, but when they're playing well, they're oozing of confidence. Exactly, and they're almost running back to the service uh, positions and uh, Teasing their opponents a little bit in uh, shots that are going wide and so on. So oh! could play back they, they're feeling the pressure, and um, it's always difficult in these uh, high-pressure situations, which aren't the big championships. Yeah, they were they were seeded three last year at the World Championship, but they were not favourites to win it somehow. But they lost that quarter-final in Glasgow against uh, Chai Bao and uh, Hong Wei games with the smallest of margins 22 20. But maybe that's also playing on their mind a bit yeah. that uh, last year did not go so well so we've got to make it this year didn't even medal last year and and the pressure has uh, hasn't faded no. with the um, withdrawal of um, the Anasir and um, Ahmad in the mixed doubles. I mean, this is clearly the Indonesian's best uh, bet for a world championship. They're out of the uh, men's singles. They have no players left here in the uh, third round. They have no players left in women's singles. So it's up to the men's doubles pairs, women's doubles, and mixed doubles to uh, to produce the goods. Yes. I I still sense that they might have an outside chance in, in the women's doubles. Yeah, uh, I think so too. And, uh, how are you? They have a crucial match tomorrow in the quarterfinal against the top seeds from uh, China in the, that women's doubles. Their defense is, uh, so to speak, getting a little bit better here. And uh, the attack of the tall Vladimir Ivanov is still strong enough. Strong enough. He's got a lot of power. He's got a lot of steepness to work with. on the flicker from uh, Sosanov there. But, uh, 15, 16. Same can't be said about that defensive shot from... Uh, Our partner enough. let him down. Yeah. The Russians all also won the European Championship. That was back in 2014. Oh. Definitely making sure that uh, Sukamulio can't get into it at the net. Lifting it very high on that beautiful play. Oh, that's it. Really, really good play by the two Russians. You see on a few occasions that you know, Kevin Sukamulio, he's jumping at the net, hoping for yeah. a, a, a flat lift, but he just doesn't get in there. Yeah, down the middle, always a good choice. Grace 
just this small confusion. So if you were the Indonesians, what would you do? I know what I would do, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I was the Indonesians... I would go and ask Harry Piangardi what, what he was suggesting, <laughs> because he's almost always right. Um, I would play a lot of shots to uh, Ivan Sosunov. He's not as dangerous as uh, Ivanov, and eventually, if you can uh, put pressure on him, then... Um, Especially on his defense, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Also at the net, if he makes mistakes, <laughs> he seems to get a little bit... Um, irritated? Yeah, Ivanov gets a little bit irritated and sort of, sort of moves into himself, so to speak. Right. Yeah, I, I would probably say, you know, ask uh, Sukamoglio to take over a bit, you know, be big on court, um, but at the same time maybe tone down the attack a little bit yeah. and wait for his chances just slightly more patiently. As I actually think he has done just the last uh, three or four shots or so of rallies, he has been more patient. Yeah, and we saw it yesterday when he was at the back court where he was sort of just playing downward shots, keeping the initiative and not getting out of um, balance. Bit of luck here, everybody needs that. Great dive. Perfectly down the line in the backhand of uh, Ivan Sosunov. And that's opening up for two game points here for the Indonesians. 20 game point 18, and Kevin Tukamoyo is serving. Doing a rare mistake. So do you think another flick will come here? No. Dead. And it is, and Indonesia take this opening game, 21-19. Two points ahead. Two points ahead. That's enough. But look at this time, I, I feel that uh, Kevin Sukamulyu is holding a little bit back on his attack. Here we got the confirmation, 21-19 in 17 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to go to the 
А ты с этого тоже, там вот там в центре играет, ты сразу раз на сеточку просто. Да нет, назад. Ты еще получишь здесь прав. А ты ближе, ближе подождешь. И вот как только сделан на фор, как бы, ускорение. Вот ты на свою руке. Ускоряешь и пошел жестко. Давай. Давай. The way that the coach goes in and you know, just touch on the shoulder a bit, say, you know, you watch out for this when you do this. Yeah, and, and that's one thing with the Indonesians. They're almost always ahead in terms of uh, coaching comparison. Harry Piangari, so experienced uh, for many years together with uh, Christian Hadinata, but um, he's taking over. And, uh, I've seen so many matches where he eventually found a solution for a pair who's seemed to be in trouble yeah we haven't seen christian for many years it's been some years since i've seen him last i saw him in uh, indonesia you uh, saw yeah, him yeah. Um, a few weeks ago a few weeks ago that's nice oh! yeah he was at the top of his game when i kind of started getting onto the international circuit Christian and Chandra. And very, very strong Indonesian men's doubles. Won the All England on many occasions. They also formed a formidable pair with uh, Lim Sui King in the uh, Thomas Cup. I don't think they ever lost a match. They haven't. They haven't. I know. <laughs> I've played against them. <laughs> and it's not oh, fun. That's the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> it is not fun. A little bit of that. Oh. Cheering himself on uh, Marcus Gideon and uh, it's a story from former late golfer Seve Ballesteros who figured out that uh, he noticed that when he was playing well he was whistling. So <laughs> he uh, thought why not try the opposite way? What if I'm starting to whistle? Maybe I play better. And he actually felt that he played better when he was whistling. Yeah, going along on the back line. Great serve. <laughs> Slightly spinning, taking the top of the tape, falling on the line. What more can you ask? Yeah. Cross from the body. Absolutely perfect. Got to be careful now, the Russians. Yeah, the train, Mike. Run away. that won the uh, All England in 2016, just before the Olympics, but uh, then very unlucky, even Sosanov ruptured his uh, Achilles during the European Seven. Championship later that year and uh, was actually making a miraculous recovery and played the Olympics. I put that in my notes as well, he did play. I couldn't believe that he could recover that quickly which means that the Russian pair competed in the 2012 London Olympics and also at the 2016 in Rio. appealing for the fact that the shuttle should have touched even off on the way out but the umpire saying no
couple of totally wrong shots there, even out of that one. That's suicide. It was killed on uh, on Sosonov, but uh, playing that flat shot in the round ahead side to uh, Kevin Sukimulia, that's asking for it. Tried to really that defensive shot by Sukumolio. He's trying to play a topspin shot yeah. on it. Oh, we don't get the next one, but uh, that would have been great to watch. Somehow the Russians are still hanging in. I, I feel like, you know, they should have been way down by now, yeah. but somehow the score is 8-9. Exactly. It's a, it's a very strange phase in the game here where it's a little bit, are the Russians going to take over or are the Indonesians going to extend their lead? And it's not that fantastic badminton. So I feel there's a lot of nerves in play on the court right now. It's in again. An appeal. Yeah. yeah, I think it's in. I think it's in too. But he's not satisfied, even though. Uh, no, no, no. no. He also left one before, and if if uh, looks could kill, he would have stared that shuttle to death. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, looks can't kill. Yeah. I still think it was a good challenge because it's sort of. Uh, Gave them a break. The Russians. It's hard to swallow that. Uh, it was on the line. So Indonesia goes into the mid-game interval here with a lead of 11-8. At the mid-game interval here, having won the first 21 start here for the Indonesians got the first point after the interval and 12-8 uh, it is and as Dean and I keep saying it's a very transitional period in this game would the Indonesians be able to run away with it or are the Russians going to take over hard to say it's a very touch and go at the moment serving and now it looks like the train is running the Indonesians are getting more and more confidence 15-9 
That's perfect serving by Marcus Gideon here. Again, just touching the top of the tape and then landing just inside the line. And that's a beautiful block shot there by Kevin Sugamoglio. And that's a heavy, heavy lead now for the Indonesians. 17, 9, 8 points. Seems like in the bag. That's going long. So, the Russians really have some catching up to do here. It's 10, 17. But I fear that's a little bit too little too late. Wow, that is fantastic, that shot there. <laughs> Forehand period. It's 9.8 in artistic impression. Oh, Only 9.8. Can't, can't even think of the difficulty level. <laughs> yeah, some confusion here. Kevin can't really get to it. Uh, hoping that partner Gideon is having it. Doesn't seem like they're getting their first game win no. today. They ran away after the interval. They absolutely ran away. 15 9, 17 9. sort of feeling I had you know in the early stages of the second game that it could just as easily exactly. have been that but it was I think nine this shot is in which means that the challenge is unsuccessful no more challenges but uh, that might not have a lot of influence on this match from now on 19 12 12-19. And match point has arrived. 20 match point, 12 for the top seats. Number one on the world ranking here, we've got it. 21-12 in the second game on yet another really really good serve by Gideon once again small spin in it taking the top of the tape and it's not returnable Short celebration between the two players. I think they came quite nicely out of it this time, especially in that second game. Here we got the confirmation, third round men's doubles. Gideon and Sukamolio winning 21-19, 21-12 against Ivanov and Sosonov of Russia.